this video, we'll be discussing shutter, how it works, and how it affects exposure. In photography, exposure is the amount of light entering the camera. Exposure determines the overall lightness or darkness of a captured image. Here in the two images on the right-hand side, you can see one that's really bright and one that's not very bright. Neither of them are really perfectly exposed. We would call the upper one overexposed and the lower one underexposed. A helpful paradigm in photography to use when thinking about exposure is the exposure triangle. It says that exposure has three components and all three need to be functioning for you to get an image. Those components are aperture, shutter, and ISO. Exposure is measured using photographic stops. Photographic stops are really a method of measuring more than a unit of measuring. Changing one photographic stop is a doubling or a halving of the amount of light entering the camera. To assess how much light we have getting into the camera, we actually look at the exposure level indicator viewed through the viewfinder or the LCD. On the exposure level indicator we have here, there's a marquee underneath the zero. That means that the exposure is kind of balanced out. If you adjust your exposure settings till the marquee moves to plus one on the number line, that's an increase of one photographic stop and you have doubled the amount of light getting into the camera. In this video, we're discussing the shutter and how it affects exposure. The shutter is a metal device built into the camera body that allows light to pass beyond the lens and to a photosensitive surface or the sensor for specific durations. It's really about time. On the right-hand side of the screen here, you can see a slow-motion animation of a shutter opening and closing. You're also seeing the mirror inside of the camera body kick up while the shutter opens, and then the shutter closes, and the mirror kicks back down. The duration of that amount of time that the shutter is open is measured in seconds. These measurements of seconds are referred to as shutter speeds. Surprisingly, on the camera, for a concept that's so simple, shutter speed numbers can be difficult to identify. Sometimes whole numbers have close quotes on the right-hand side of them, and sometimes fractions of seconds are expressed either as whole numbers or as literal fractions of a second. We'll return to that a little bit later in the video. Right now, let's settle on some vocabulary. A shutter cycle actually means the process of the shutter opening, closing, and resetting to where it is ready to open again. Quite a bit happens when the shutter opens and closes, so there is a life expectancy to every shutter, and they just don't last forever. At some point, they begin to break down and you have to get them repaired. Next, let's discuss shutter lag. It's a big deal in digital photography, especially when you're using semi-automatic or automatic modes. It's the amount of time that passes between you when you actually press the shutter actuation button and when the shutter begins to actuate its cycle. This can be some time if you're using an autofocus mode or depending on how well your camera can meter. Next, let's discuss flash synchronization, sometimes called flash sync. It's defined as the synchronization of the firing of the photographic flash at the same time the shutter is open, allowing light from the flash to get to the photo sensor. There's an order of operations to this so that it all works out correctly. First, the shutter cycle begins. Next, the flash starts to fire. Then the flash ends its fire. And then last, the shutter cycle concludes. If this doesn't work out right, you get some weird results, like the shot over here on the top left. There's a line at the bottom. That's where the shutter was closing before the flash had completed its fire. So that dark part of the shot wasn't actually exposed for with the flash. It only has the exposure of the ambient light in the room. Whereas with the bottom shot, the entire shot is exposed for with the flash. Next, let's look and see how we access the shutter settings on a couple different cameras. This camera is really easy. It's just got a shutter dial at the very top. Most of the numbers on the shutter dial express fractions of seconds, with the exception of the number one, the T, the B, and the A. This is a half a second, a quarter, an eighth, a fifteenth, a thirtieth, a sixtieth of a second, and so on. Here we're at one eight thousandth of a second. We do have an automatic setting on this particular dial. We've got a bulb setting, and then we also have a time setting. On this camera, all we need to do is roll our finger across the control dial, and that automatically changes the shutter speed. Here we're doing a shooting experiment so that you can see how shutter affects exposure. We're in manual shooting mode, and then here we can see the shutter speed expressed as 200, but it's really 1 200th of a second, and then the 11 is the aperture or the F number. We're going to be metering a gray card, which has an 18% reflectance. This is middle gray. 
We'll also be using the exposure level indicator because so we could see where we're at with our exp Here we're at 1 200th of a second, F11, ISO 100, and that's our shot. Now let's quicken up the shutter speed considerably to 1 400th of a second. We've just cut the amount of light getting into the camera in half by cutting the amount of time that we have the shutter open in half. You can see here that we're a little over one stop underexposed. And here's our shot. It's a lot darker. Let's go ahead and repeat this again. This time, we're going to quicken up the shutter speed even more to 1 800th of a second. We've just cut the light four times getting into the camera with a two stop decrease. You can see here on the exposure level indicator how underexposed we are. And then here's the shot. It's getting really dark. And that's what happens. The faster the shutter goes, the less light gets into the camera. If we slow down the shutter back to 1 200th of a second, we take a reading. We can see here that we're going to be close to perfect exposure. Take another shot, and we're back at a really nice, well exposed shot. Next, we're going to test the shutter in the other direction. We're going to slow it down and see how that affects exposure. You might notice a slight change in the aesthetics as well, how things look, but mostly we're going to be working on changing the exposure. We just slowed the shutter speed down to 1 100th of a second. That's twice as long as we were at before. Let's take the shot. We're one stop overexposed and we can see that it's brighter. And we're going to slow down the shutter a little bit more. We're going to cut it to 1 50th of a second. That's a pretty slow shutter. And you can see here that we're starting to get really overexposed. And it's getting brighter, and also it's starting to look a little bit different. We'll slow it down again to 1 25th of a second. We'll take a reading. We can see that we're really overexposed, almost three stops, somewhere between two and three, but we'll call it two this time. That's a lot of extra light getting into the camera, so the shot's really bright. And again, it's aesthetically different. This time we're going to do something kind of interesting. We're going to leave the shutter speed at 1 25th of a second, that's just a fraction of a second, and we're going to adjust the other settings so that we get our exposure back down so that we're yielding a medium gray or a middle gray out of this shot. So we're pretty overexposed right now, so we're closing down the aperture until we get that marquee balanced out in the middle. We're pretty close. So here we're at 1 25th of a second, f22, and the ISO is 100. This is an exposure equivalent to our original shot where we're shooting at 1 200th of a second, f11, and ISO 100. It means that the exposure level is the same, but we got the light in differently, so the aesthetics are going to change. Let's take a second and compare what these two would look like close up. Over here on the left, we've got it shot at 1 200th of a second, and on the right, 1 25th of a second. 1 200th of a second is a lot faster than 1 25th of a second, and you can see that they actually look a little bit different. The aesthetic making the difference here is motion blur. It's what happens when you leave the shutter open for longer durations of time. Things get blurry if they're moving. Now here, it kind of just looks a little bit fuzzy, but it actually has some pretty cool applications, like panning, when you allow the camera to follow along with the subject matter so that the subject matter stays still, but the background gets blurry. Also, there's these kind of shots. Have you ever seen these, where you get waterfalls or rivers or oceans where the water is moving, and you get this beautiful, soft, fuzzy glow just by leaving the shutter open for a long time and letting all those white, water droplets record in there and get blurred out. And then also my favorite, light painting or light drawing. When you use a light source in the shot and wander around with it with the camera shutter open for a long time so that you record all the movements of that light source. Here, I think it's a sparkler. With fast shutter speeds, you can do things like this, like just absolutely freeze the motion of water. Isn't that beautiful? This is another example of the same thing. It's actually a really common technique to use incredibly fast shutter speed with sports photography, so you just freeze that amazing motion. And then last, I think these are really worth looking at by Atan Conrad. These are a combination of long shutter speed along with flash. 
So the woman in this shot is frozen in motion by exposing her with off-camera flash, and then in the darkness, Atan walks around with different sorts of light-giving devices to create these sort of light dresses. They're pretty neat. 